Hi, welcome to another edition of Numerous Studio. In this video, we will talk about one of the ways by which we can make sense out of the numbers in a set of data. For example, in the given table that shows measurements of estriol levels in pregnant women and birth weights, the relationship between the two variables mentioned is not readily visible. However, if we subject the data into some basic statistical analysis, we can form certain conclusions that may help predict certain trends and help make decisions or action plans supported by evidence. This relationship between two or more variables is called correlation. Specifically, we will be looking into variables that are linearly related, which means that they change together at a constant rate. Correlation is a common tool for describing simple relationships without making a statement about cause and effect. If the values in this table were plotted as points in a positive x and y plane, where estriol levels is the independent variable x and birth weight is the dependent variable y, the result is the scatter plot as shown. We notice that in general, the points tend to follow an increasing linear trend, which could be interpreted as, as estriol levels increase, birth weights also tend to increase, or with lower estriol levels, we can expect to have lower birth weights as well. Take note that we did not say lower estriol levels will cause lower birth weights. Again, we emphasize that correlation does not signify cause and effect. Like mentioned, there is a positive correlation between two variables when the points follow an increasing trend from left to right. When the points align to form a straight line, the correlation is said to be perfect. As the points start to deviate from that line, but are still relatively close to it, we have a strong correlation. And as the points go farther from the line of best fit or the trend line, the correlation becomes weaker and weaker. For negative correlation, the points in the scatter plot follow a decreasing trend. Such is the case when one quantity increases, the other decreases, or if one quantity decreases, the other increases. There is a perfect negative correlation when the points align in a straight line and the relationship becomes weaker and weaker as the points go farther away from that line. Two variables are said to have no correlation if the points in the scatter plot do not indicate any trend at all. But how do we quantify this relationship? Can we assign a number to such correlation to signify strength or weakness of such relationship? One of the statistical tools that answers those questions is the Pearson Product Moment Correlation Coefficient, or simply R. And R is given by this formula. The correlation coefficient R has values ranging from negative 1 for perfect negative correlation to positive 1 for perfect positive correlation. A coefficient of 0 signifies no correlation at all. So, negative 1 and 1 means perfect correlation, positive negative 9 means very high correlation, Positive negative 0.5 means moderate correlation. There is negligible correlation for positive negative 2. And again, no correlation for coefficient of 0. 
we can use this table to interpret computed values for R. So for example, we wanted to know if there is a correlation between mathematics and English performance of a group of six students. Their final grades of those two subjects are shown, where mathematics is the independent variable x, and English is the dependent variable y. The formula will need us to construct the following columns, xy, which is the product of the x and y values, x squared, which is the square of the math grades, and y squared for the square of the English grades. Now, we take the sum of the values in each column and the values are shown. We plug in those values into the formula with n equal to 6 because we have 6 students being investigated. You can pause this video to verify how the values were used in the formula. This gives a computed value for r equal to negative 0.85, which according to the table presented, signifies a very high negative correlation. One possible interpretation of this result is that, for this particular group, performance in the two subjects tends to go in opposite direction. High performers in math tend to be low performers in English and vice versa. Of course, in reality, this is not necessarily true. We have seen a lot of people who perform excellently in both fields. Which leads us to some things we need to remember about correlation. One is that correlation is not representative. What is true to one group may not be true to another group. And again, correlation is not causative. We do not use correlation to determine cause and effect relationship as that can be achieved by other statistical methods such as experimentation. Now, using the methods described in this video, are you able to determine relationship between percent reticulocytes and lymphocytes for these nine patients with a plastic anemia? And if such relationship exists, what is the extent to which they are related? So that's it for correlation. Like, subscribe, and hit the notification button if you learned something from this video. I'll see you in the next one.